the last time, we learned about discrete random variables. These are variables whose outcomes can take on whole number values. This week, we're going to expand our learning to continuous random variables. These are variables whose outcomes take on values within an interval. Let's review what we've already learned, and I'll show you what we're going to do this time. A random variable is an outcome from a statistical experiment. It is notated as a letter X. This random variable may be discrete. It may occur only as whole numbers, which cannot have decimals. However, we're going to learn this week about continuous random variables. Continuous random variables take on values within an interval of a probability density function. In this normal distribution, we can see a lower value and an upper value, the arrow indicating the values within that interval. So why would we want to know about values within an interval? Why not a specific value? To illustrate, as we are moving around campus, an easy way to get to where you want to go is to jump on one of the shuttles. The question, however, whenever you arrive at a shuttle stop is, how long are you going to have to wait? We know that certain shuttles run by a particular stop every 15 minutes, which means that the time that you will wait will be between zero, the shuttle is there when you arrive at the shuttle stop, and 15 minutes. But when you go to a particular shuttle stop, the question of how long you are going to have to wait is a random variable. So we are not interested in the probability of you having to wait exactly two minutes. Rather, we want to know the probability of waiting no more than three minutes, x less than or equal to three, or a wait between one and five minutes. Or because you know that you could walk to where you want to go in less than 10 minutes, what is the probability of having to wait more than 10 minutes? And if that probability is high, perhaps you decide to walk instead. Or even better, what's the probability of not having to wait? That when you arrive at the shuttle stop, the shuttle will already be there. These are the kinds of questions that we answer with a continuous probability distribution. As we have done before in basic business statistics, we're going to get a business of the week that is going to help us illustrate the topic for a given week. In this case, continuous probability distributions. And this week, I have great news. We are going on a cruise. Our business of the week is Ted's Cruises. Is the weather too cold? Well, leave your problems, your responsibilities, and your pets behind. And join us here in warmer climes with Ted's Cruise Line. You can join us on the USS Zodiac Thriller, the pride of the Q-Star Line. This business of the week is going to help us illustrate the three types of continuous probability distributions that we are going to learn about. The first of which is the uniform probability distribution. We also used a uniform probability distribution with discrete random variables. This time, we will use the uniform probability distribution to model events that are likely to occur in a continuous random variable, such as your wait time when you get on a university shuttle. Second, we are going to learn the exponential probability distribution. This models time between occurrences of an event. And if you're thinking that sounds like a Poisson distribution, you're close, and I'm going to distinguish between the two. Third, we are going to learn about the most important distribution in all of statistics, and that is the normal probability distribution. This models pretty much everything, and it is the most common distribution that we will use in our course. So with that, let's get started learning about probability distributions for continuous random variables.